In 2001, archaeologists excavating a prehistoric settlement are astonished. These mummies are preserved as individual bodies. They're each made up of the remains of three different people. How did this even happen? And what were these people trying to accomplish by doing it? Scientists are trying to explain the discovery of Scotland's first ever mummified skeletons. They're found on the Hebridean island of South Uist, an historic chunk of rock that's been inhabited for 10,000 years. The Hebridean Islands are not everyone's idea of a perfect vacation, but they're covered with amazing archaeological remains. Vikings, Celts, and ancient Scottish lords have all left a mark in the archaeological landscape. But excavations of a Bronze Age settlement at the south end of the island reveal human remains unlike anything seen in Scotland before. These bodies appear to be mummified. This type of burial isn't just unusual for Britain, it's totally unique. Unlike the mummies in ancient Egypt, kept dry in tombs or sarcophagi, the mummies of Scotland are buried underground. Damp conditions in the soil have allowed hair and skin to break down and disappear over time. But the fetal position of the remaining bones is evidence of preservation. With nothing left to hold them together, bones often shift as the earth moves around them, which leaves archaeologists to have to piece them back together. But these bodies aren't the usual jumble of bones. They're articulated and well-ordered. This is clear evidence that these bodies went through some sort of preservation shortly after their death. To test this theory, some bones are sent to be CT scanned. The results will confirm if the bodies were intentionally preserved. Buried bones show signs of something called tunneling, which is the bacteria tunneling in and eroding the bones away. CT scans of unpreserved bones reveal a labyrinth of branching bacterial tunnels. These show up as dark marbled regions throughout the eroded bones. But the South Uist mummies are strikingly different. In the case of the remains here, we do see the beginning of the process of tunneling but then the remains have been subjected to something that essentially halts that process. This is clear evidence of an intentional strategy to halt the process of decomposition. What we have here is obviously mummification. There's no history of mummification in this part of the world whatsoever. It's like finding a Corvette in the middle of the Amazon. It does not make sense. To reveal the truth, scientists study the arrangement of the bodies. One very obvious comparison that could be made, just to, to, to look at some facets of it, are the mummies that have been found across ancient Peru uh, with the same kind of fetal position and the same kind of structure of the mummy itself. In Peru, it is the Incas who are most famous for mummifying their dead, preserving important ancestors, great leaders, and even sacrificial victims. The Inca realized that the best way to preserve a body after death is to dry it out very quickly. They used salt, which is readily available in South America, but they also used the natural environment of the high Andes. The high altitude environment of the Andes are very cold and dry, so the bodies lose their moisture very quickly. They are essentially freeze-dried, preserving them in their bound fetal position for centuries. But the climate conditions found in Scotland are wildly different to those found in Peru. The wet weather found throughout the year on this windswept Scottish island will make freeze drying impossible. And there's no evidence of any kind of South American sea salts to help the process along. The ancient people of Scotland appear to have found their own unique way of mummifying the dead. The bones are studied for further clues, revealing evidence that their chemical structure has been changed through contact with an acidic environment. Now, the nearest acidic environment during the Bronze Age would have been a series of peat bogs, and that's a really compelling clue. 
Bronze Age Scots used to use peat bogs to preserve some types of food. But could they have used them to preserve and mummify human bodies? There is no history of peat bog mummification anywhere in Scotland. But in mainland Europe, it's a different story. Hundreds of these bog bodies have been found throughout mainland Europe, mainly in the Iron Age. Walkers in Scandinavia in 1950 stumbled upon a frozen body that looked so realistic with its wrinkles and his three-day-old beard that they thought he was a murder victim. But in actual fact, it was a bog mummy. But there is no trace of skin or flesh left on the South U.S. skeletons. So, to test whether they were actually preserved in a bog, bioarchaeologists study the surface of the bones. When a body is placed into a peat bog, the bones inside become demineralized to some degree. And the bones in South Uist were found to be demineralized just to the measurement of 0.08 inches. The shallow demineralization is evidence the bodies were submerged in a peat bog, but not permanently. Tests reveal the bodies were left between six and 18 months, just long enough to preserve the bones, but the motives remain unknown. These mummies are a groundbreaking discovery. What is going on here? Bone experts study the remains for further clues and notice the jaw of the female mummy seems too large for her skull. They send two mummies for DNA analysis and the results take everyone by surprise. Even though these mummies are preserved as individual bodies, they're each made up of the remains of three different people. The male mummy has the body of one man, the head of another, and the jaw of a third. But the female mummy is even more bizarre. What's really crazy is that she has a woman's torso, but she has an entirely different woman's arm. She's completely missing one of her knees, and weirdest of all, she has a man's head. Someone has taken on the role of Dr. Frankenstein when preparing these mummies, taking different parts and creating single hybrid mummies. To try and explain this gruesome arrangement of bones, samples from the mummies and their graves are sent for radiocarbon dating. Often archeologists will do radiocarbon dating on the bones in a burial and also on organic remains in the burial and typically they tend to be about the same date. In this case, the dates are very different. Tests reveal that the bones of the male hybrid mummy are from 1600 BCE. The female mummy is younger, from 1300 BCE. But both date to the time of an ancient people known as the Druids. Now, the Druids served as the wise men, the brain trust of the Celts. They were adjudicators, they were uh, political advisors, they were even magicians and shamans. So they had a view into the other world through their magic. The great Roman general Julius Caesar was somewhat in awe of the Druids. In 54 BC, he spoke of their hunger for human sacrifice, their worship of the dead, and their belief in immortality. Further radiocarbon dating reveals another surprise. The Druids did not bury these mummies until around 1000 BCE, hundreds of years after they died. The people in this particular Scottish community seem to have kept their dead close at hand for an extended period of time. And this is actually a practice which we see across many ancient civilizations. But there is little known evidence of this type of ritual treatment of the dead in ancient Scotland. The discovery offers a new theory about the rituals of the mysterious Druids. The evidence seems to suggest that the Druids created these mummies as a, a means or a link for direct communication with divine ancestors. And it's possible that they may have kept these mummies in their own mummy houses for as long as several centuries. Just as the ideas gain traction, archaeologists make a discovery that forces them to think again. They find the female mummy's missing kneecap. Not in the burial pit under the house, 
but in an older grave, dating to the time of her mummification, around 1300 BCE. This tells us something about the sequence of events, that these individuals were buried, and then their bodies were taken out of the burial pit and then put in the ground under the construction of a new Druid house. Typically, that's done for purposes of ancestor worship. The idea of a hybrid mummy, in this case, may have been to combine the bones of an array of different ancestors. It may not have mattered whose arm was whose or even whose head was whose. The really important thing was that you had a full and complete ancestor, skeleton, to, to serve as the symbol for you, especially if you're going to put it in a place like underneath a resident. 3,000 years after these mummies were assembled, science has finally revealed how and why. Now, archaeologists are reevaluating other remains from the same period of British history. Bronze Age bones from Kent, Dorset, and Cambridgeshire all show similar signs of preservation as the Scottish mummies. And that suggests that these bones could have been mummified too. These grave sites that we typically would think were run-of-the-mill burials might actually turn out to be the sites of mummifications as well. And we have our findings at the South Uist site to thank for that. <laughs>